In this video, we are going to do a pigeonhole example that involves three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. So the example says, prove that any simple graph with six vertices contains three vertices, all of which are joined together by edges, or three vertices, none of which are joined by an edge. So either there's going to be three vertices, all of which are joined by an edges, so I get a triangle situation, or three vertices where there's no edge between any two of them. So if I have a picture like this, these three are called three mutual friends, three mutual friends, because I can think of any edge as representing two people who are friends. So these two vertices would be friends if there's an edge connecting them. And in a picture like this, if there's no edge between any two of these people, well, these three people, these three people are mutual strangers. Okay, so I can just refer to them as that. So, you know, if I draw, if I play around with this, and I try drawing some graphs that have six vertices, what six vertices, imagine there's an edge connecting these two, and these two, and then that one. And maybe there's another edge here. So can I find three that are either all mutual friends or all mutual strangers? And the answer is, well, I don't see any mutual friends, three mutual friends here. Because for example, like if I look at these three, well, there's no edge connecting these two. So these two people would not be friends. They would be considered strangers. However, I do see three mutual strangers. Like for example, this one, this one, and this one. Between any two of these, there's no edge connecting them. So I do have three mutual strangers here. Okay, so how do we prove this? How do we prove that this is the case, that any group of six people either has three mutual friends or three mutual strangers? So we're gonna do pigeonhole principle. So let's start off by drawing our vertices. I'm gonna draw A, and I'm gonna focus in on A, and then I'll draw all the other ones to the side. B, C, D, E and F, that'll just make it easier to analyze. And I'm gonna do pigeonhole principle and let the pigeons be these other vertices that are not A. So B, C, D, E, and F. So I wanna notice that there are five of them, five pigeons. For the holes, I'm gonna to need to get a little creative. For the holes, one hole is gonna be all the vertices that share an edge with A. So for example, if there was an edge connecting A to B, well then B would be in this hole of vertices that share an edge with A. But on the other hand, if there was no edge connecting two of the vertices, like if there's no edge connecting A to E, then E will go in this second hole, which is vertices that don't share an edge with A. Okay, so there are two, there are two holes. So if I use the generalized pigeonhole principle, it says that there are going to be at least five divided by two, and I take the ceiling, and that equals three, three vertices, three pigeons, that either are in hole one or they're in hole two. So they either all share an edge with A, or they all don't, or they all don't share an edge with A. So what that's gonna do, because I have this or statement, is it gives me two cases to consider. So case one is gonna be these three vertices share an edge with A. Okay, and then case two is going to be there's three vertices that don't, that don't share an edge with A. So I have to think about each of these cases. So in this first case, if there are three vertices, three of these vertices, B, C, D, E, and F, that share an edge with A, it doesn't really matter which three of them they are. So because of that, I can use a without loss of generality argument. So remember, I abbreviate that by saying W-L-O-G, or WOLOG. WOLOG, let's assume that these vertices are B, 
C and D. That those are three vertices that do share an edge with A. Okay, so in my picture then, I would have A, let's just focus on the B, C, and the D. And now in this case, I'm assuming that there's an edge connecting A to B, and A to C, and A to D. All right, and I'm going to split this up now into two subcases. So in this first subcase, let's say that there is no edge between any two of B, C, and D. So no edge from B to C, no edge from C to D. Ooh, sorry, didn't mean to erase. No edge between C and D, and no edge between B and D. So in other words, the picture of these four vertices looks exactly like this. Well then, if I focus on B, C, and D, there's no edge connecting any two of them. So then we have that B, C, and D are mutual strangers. We have three mutual strangers. So we'd be done. So I'll put a check mark there. In this subcase, we have three mutual strangers. And if I have either three mutual strangers or three mutual friends, that's good enough. That's what the problem wants us to show. Okay, so then what's the other subcase? So this first subcase is, well, there was no edge between any two of them. So the opposite of that would be there is at least one. The opposite of no edge would be there's at least one edge between two of those vertices, between two of B, C, and D. It doesn't really matter between which two. So again, I can use wolog, my without loss of generality. Wolog, let's assume that it joins B to C. So if it joins B to C and I draw this picture, I'll have my A, I'll have B, I'll have C, I'll have D. And in this case, A is connected to all three of them. And now in this subcase, I'm assuming that there's another edge and it just so happens to join the B and the C together. Well, then if I focus on A, B, and C, well, they're three mutual friends. So then A, B, and C are mutual friends. So we'd have three mutual friends. Awesome. So that's, again, something successful for us. So I'll put a check mark. Okay, so we are done with case one. In the case where the three vertices, which we called B, C, and D, all share an edge with A, I'm either gonna have three mutual strangers or three mutual friends. Either way, we're good. So case two is now, what if three vertices don't share an edge with A? It doesn't matter which three they are. So woe log, let's assume that the vertices are B, C, and D again, that those three don't share an edge with A. So now instead my picture would look more like I have A, I have B, I have C, I have D, and there's no edge from A to B, or from A to C, or from A to, or A to D. None of those three vertices are connected to A with an edge. So for this, I wanna give you an opportunity to try this first. So pause the video for four minutes and see if you can finish the problem from here. Again, we're gonna need two subcases so I want to give you an opportunity to think through what they might be. Pause it in four, three, two, one. Pause it and try it. Okay, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it. Let's talk about it now. So the first subcase that I'll consider is, again, I'll consider kind of an extreme situation, which is what if there's an edge connecting, connecting or, or joining, connecting every pair every pair in B, C, and D. Well, then what I would have is I would have A, and then I'd have my B, I'd have my C, and I'd have my D. So if there's an edge connecting every pair of B, C, and D, B is connected to C, C would be connected to D, and B would be connected to D. Well, then I have three mutual friends. B, C, and D are mutual friends. So then B, C, and D are mutual friends, so we'd be done. They are mutual friends, so we would be done. I'll put a check mark there. Okay, that leaves one other subcase, which is, so what would be the opposite of this? What's the opposite of there's an edge connecting every pair within B, C, and D? 
Well, the opposite would be, well, there's at least one pair. There's at least one pair in B, C, and D that is not connected with an edge. That is not connected with an edge. So it doesn't really matter which pair it is. So without loss of generality, let's assume it's B and C that are not connected with an edge. So then my picture would look like I'd have A, I'd have B, I'd have C, I'd have D. So I'd have these vertices. I would have these vertices. In fact, let's not even focus on D. It turns out I don't even need it here. Well, we've already said that A is not connected to B. It's not connected to C because that's the case I'm considering. None of these three shared an edge with A. And now in this subcase, I'm assuming that there's a, no edge between the B and the C. So if that's the case, these three vertices form mutual strangers. Then we have that A, B, and C are mutual strangers. They are mutual strangers. Cool, it's check mark, we're done there. So I'm ready for the conclusion because every case has now worked. So in every case, we either have three mutual friends, we either have three mutual friends or three mutual strangers which is what we wanted to show. So we are done. So we are done. And there's an example of how we could use the pigeonhole principle to tackle a problem in graph theory.